Welcome to Hard Talk with me, Zainab Badawi, in Athens. This is the building where the new Greek cabinet meet and it's also the office of the Prime Minister. My guest in this exclusive interview is the new Prime Minister of Greece, Kyriakos Mitsotakis. He has promised to set the country on a new path of prosperity after years of austerity. But has he promised more than he can deliver? Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis in Athens, welcome to Hard Talk. Oh, thank you very much. This was not a ringing endorsement of new democracy and you, was it? It was more a protest vote against the former government led by Syriza. I'm not too sure. We got 40% of the popular vote. Um, we are in a position to form a government on our own. We have an absolute majority. We have a very strong uh, mandate uh, and at a time when uh, European politics uh, tend to get uh, uh, constantly more fragmented, we have managed uh, to consolidate our, uh, our base, uh, increase our share of vote by 12%, from 28% to 40%, and you won't find many centre-right parties in Europe these days uh, reaching those uh, numbers. But if you look at the composition of the parliament, the centre-left collectively mm. had 48% of the vote. That's a lot of Greek people mm -hmm. who still believe in the centre-left. Well, the centre-left uh, is highly fragmented if you count Syriza as a party of the, uh, the centre-left. I, I, I still have my doubts as to whether they can evolve uh, into a, um, a party uh, that belongs to the centre-left. But my main concern uh, today is to make good use uh, of uh, the strong mandate that I received from the Greek uh, But you uh, have to convince those people who did cast their votes for Syriza and centre-left parties that you represent my, them. My job, my job, yeah, you're, you're right to point out that I made, a, I made a campaign pledge that I want to unite Greece after four years of divisive politics and I fully recognise that uh, there are lots of people who took a hard look at what we had to say uh, and decided not to uh, vote for us and my point is that I want to really go out of my way uh, and convince these people that I deserve their trust. What does this mean? Uh, it means primarily uh, inclusive policies. I think we're ready um, uh, to put Greece back into an aggressive growth trajectory and we want to make sure that this growth is equally shared and that everyone will benefit. So this for me uh, is uh, probably the, 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 big, the biggest challenge that I will be facing. But you know, you talk to so many Greeks, you read about so mm. many opinions from Greek people and they say, can the government, led by new democracy now, really clean up a mess which arguably when it was in power between 2004 to 2009 it was part of the mm. system that created the mess in the first place. Yeah, I, I hear that uh, argument a lot but 10 years is a long time uh, in politics and uh, today's net democratia is very different uh, from uh, net democratia 10 years ago. It has a new leader uh, I personally uh, got elected, I would say, against the trend. I was not the, the favorite to take over the party. I come from a political family, but I, always, I was always considered an, an outlier um, within, uh, within my party. Uh, and uh, I've managed to uh, rebrand, uh, change the party. Uh, lots of young people who entered politics for the first time. And if you take a look at the composition of our government, for the first time, one out of three ministers uh, are actually from the private sector. They don't have any real political experience. They are what we call technocrats, which is a word I particularly don't uh, dislike. They bring very specific skills and expertise to their jobs. So we're making a case that this is a different party uh, and a very different government. Really a different party because there are those who say um, Kyriakos Mitsotakis is a liberal leading an illiberal party. You're very centrist, but there are very traditional mm. elements mm. within your party who perhaps don't see eye to eye with you on a whole range of issues. We are a broad tent party and you don't get to 40% by convincing everyone to agree with all your opinions. That's the nature of, uh, uh, of big parties. I would disagree with the term illiberal. I would certainly use the word conservative. Uh, there are conservative elements uh, within, our, uh, within our party. We are the traditional centre-right party uh, with uh, uh, a strong, I would say, liberal uh, bias. So I've managed to keep the party uh, united. Uh, we agree on the main principles 
uh, of the policies that we have to follow. But that is, you know, the, the beauty of, uh, of being the head of a big party is that, you know, sometimes you, you have to find common ground. All right. It was Professor Kevin Featherstone of the London School of Economics mm -hmm. who said the risk is Mitsotakis becomes the liberal trapped in an illiberal party. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at the mammoth task ahead of you. Here you are, the new prime minister. You've got to really roll up your sleeves. The Greek people have suffered. They've been traumatized by a decade of austerity. Your GDP has lost 25%. Unemployment is 1.2 million people who don't have a job out of a population of roughly 11 million. People can't make ends meet. The average salary is about 650 euros a month and the cost of living is really, really high. You've got so many priorities, mm -hmm. Prime Minister. How are you going to select just a few? Well, my number one priority uh, is to restore the Greek economy to an aggressive growth path. And this growth uh, cannot come through uh, consumption and excessive borrowing. We tried that uh, and uh, it, it failed. We all know the results. It has to be a growth led uh, by investment, private investment, foreign investment, domestic investment, uh, innovation. Uh, and entrepreneurship. Uh, so the jobs that I envision to create uh, in Greece will be private sector jobs and that is why my number one priority is to make Greece an attractive destination for capital, be it domestic capital or foreign capital. That means first of all you need a stable pro-reform government. I think we have that, we've ticked that box. But then of course you need to lower taxes uh, and you need to drastically impact the regulatory environment. Greece is still a very confusing and complicated place to do business this has to change and it has to change very quickly. All right, you've mentioned three things there. Let's take the first one. You say you want to create 700,000 new jobs. Mm. Are they going to be new jobs or are you going to perhaps start just counting some of the jobs that exist in the informal economy, the black economy that are not currently accounted for? Or are they going to be brand new jobs? At the end of the day, you're looking at statistics, uh, but it's the the people who really matter, who are behind the numbers. Uh, so you are we looking have, at statistics. We, we They're are, not of course, be new everyone, jobs. everyone. They're not going to be new jobs. No, no, no. What I'm saying is there will be new jobs. What I'm saying is that you, mm. we may be counting as new jobs today, part-time employment where someone is earning 360 euros by working 20 hours um, uh, a, uh, um, a month. Is that an acceptable job? No. We may, we may still count it, and the previous government make a, made a big case of reducing the unemployment numbers, but a lot of the jobs are temporary jobs. No, my point is we need to create better paying jobs in sectors where we have natural comparative advantage, and there are plenty of those. But 700,000 new, Over brand four years. new jobs, new jobs. Is net, what you're net, pledging to Net make. new jobs. An economy is always losing jobs, it's creating jobs. We're talking about net new jobs. That should be our target for the next four because years. Because there's a lot of scepticism about mm. your ability to do that because your track record when you were Minister of Administrative Reform between 2013 and 2015, you had a brief to cut thousands of jobs and you wanted to have evaluation of people's mm. jobs and there was even talk that if you didn't meet standards you might be sacked and so on and people are saying, has Kyriakos Mitsotakis really changed his tune? Is he not going to come in well, I'm glad and you, lose jobs? I'm glad you raised that question. I had the thankless task at the time of coming in and stepping in as Minister of Administrative Reform at a time when I inherited pre-agreed um, um, job cuts uh, that were agreed by the, by the government and I had to implement that policy. I never agreed with that policy, but that was my job at the time. There will be no uh, sacking, no firings of civil servants. I've said that openly. No civil servant is under threat of, of losing his job. If anything, we need to start adding uh, civil servants, but we will do it in an organized um, way, making sure we add jobs in the civil service according to our financial ability and also hiring people where we really need them. But now I have the, now, now I have, I'm in charge of the whole country and I know that the jobs are not going to be created uh, from the public sector. They will be created from the private sector. But you know, you are seen as the Harvard educated former banker. Um, you've said things like, you know, the obstacles to business should be steamrolled. And there is suspicion that you are too much in hock to business and that you're going to forget the average ordinary Greek and start favoring those with money. I've heard that uh, story um, by, you know, uh, our, by the current, the outgoing government. Uh, I can tell you, I, the reason why I, I care about investment is because I want to create jobs. And I've made it very, very clear to business that we need to sign a new sort of contract. I will help business by lowering taxes 
uh, by helping with, um, uh, with liquidity, by improving the regulatory environment, and they will take care of the workers, they will take care of the environment, uh, they will get rid of all sort of practices where they exploit workers because, let's be honest, in an environment of high unemployment, the power is always with the, with the employees. So I will show zero tolerance to practices that go against uh, labor legislation. Uh, and I also intend uh, to, to make sure that the minimum wage uh, is, is, raised, is, is, is being raised faster than the GDP growth so in order for those who are living on the minimum wage today to have uh, a bigger share of whatever upside we can right. create, proportionally bigger share of the upside we can create. And another big thing that you've just mentioned that you also want to do is introduce tax cuts. You've said you want to bring down corporation tax from 28% to 20% mm -hmm. over the next two, two years, years yeah. mm -hmm. and also to reduce the property tax, which is mm -hmm. very unpopular, by 30%, again, over two years, and also VAT, indirect taxation, and so on. But where is the money going to come from for these tax cuts? Are you going to have a hole in the state coffers? Well, no, two points, three points, uh, actually. Uh, first of all, over the past years, the Greek economy was creating larger surpluses than were actually requested by our creditors. It was a very conscious decision taken by Mr. Tsipras to overtax the middle class and to use this additional surplus to give out handouts at the end of each year. Instead of, instead of giving out, uh, my, my point is very simple. Um, uh, if we have additional, fiscal space. It's much better to return that to the middle class through tax cuts. Point number one. Point number two, we do want to look at uh, efficiencies when it comes to public spending and there are still pockets where we can save money in terms of spending cuts, targeted spending cuts, without impacting public service. My third argument... Are you sure you can do that? I just pick it up because, I mean, that's exactly what your mm. position is, that you, you say your plans well, to cut tax will come from spending cuts there's at more about there's, there's, 1.5 billion there's, euros. There's more, there's more to come. Well, first of all, there's, 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 there's an additional argument uh, to that. Uh, an economy that grows at, with, uh, you know, at the pace of 4% delivers more money to the state coffers sure. than an economy that grows... Uh, at the pace of 2%. So, uh, so it was 2% last year, it's yeah, gone down uh, a bit but, so but, far but, this but that year. Is, but that is, that is clearly not but sufficient. But I just want to keep this very simple, really, Prime Minister. And, and, there, mean, yeah. there's, and there's a last argument that once I establish my credibility, which I hope I will do very soon, I will renegotiate, I will have opened the discussion with our creditors regarding the primary surpluses. I'm not going to do it on day one. But, uh, okay, so you're referring there to the fact that the Greek um, government has to maintain a surplus of 3.5%, which, which everyone which agrees, is what which the everyone European agrees, creditors yeah, but which have every, insisted on. every single economy would agree is excessive. And you will look at that again. But let me put this to you, a mm -hmm. quote from Yanis Mouzakis, who's co-founder of a Greek analysis website, Macropolis. He said, it will be a challenge to find savings of the required scale to implement the ambitious mm -hmm. tax cuts that have been promised by you and your tax cuts may jeopardise social security benefits and pensions. So they could hurt people who nobody, rely on social security. Nobody is talking about any cuts to social security or the current benefits, and I've never made any point alluding to that. But you've got to find the money from somewhere to make these cuts over the next two years. Well, and I, you say from I, growth no, no, that's one part and of, investment. That's one, that's one part of the argument. But look, if we don't get the Greek economy to grow, at a very fast uh, pace, we will have difficulties. I'm being very, very honest. Yeah, because, I mean, also, it's a question of time, isn't it? You can do the tax cuts over two years, but the impact of your reforms to attract investment if and you, to grow the economy takes you, a lot longer. Yeah, but if you already look at the economic climate and how it has changed since we first won the European elections and the rapid decline in the Greek um, um, costs of borrowing, indicate that the markets, which at the end of the day are the final judges of whether we are credible or not, uh, seem to believe our story uh, and they like what we have to say. So I was very, very careful not to overpromise during this campaign because I've seen the impact yeah. of uh, previous opposition leaders who overpromised. So you're not overpromising. So you've said, but I'd like saying, to cut these taxes, but if the, no, if the economy the, and the social the taxes, service the tax, budget can't take the taxes, it, the taxes, I'm not taxes, going to do the, it. The first round of uh, tax cuts, the first round of corporate taxation cut, the tax in real estate will happen on January 1st, 2020. I've also been very clear that for 2019, for the remaining months, we don't have any fiscal space right. to do anything that is, that is aggressive. But do you accept you've got to weigh up the benefits of any of your economic reforms with the political costs? Thanos Papasavas, mm -hmm. um, a London-based consultant, says Alexis Tsipras, your predecessor as Prime Minister, managed to pass tough measures with practically no social unrest for the past few years. That would not have been the case under any right-of-centre government. This is a danger. There could be social unrest. 
Um, are, are you ready for this? Are you ready I don't for this? See, I don't see a society that's ready to, um, to, take, um, um, to take to the streets the way it did back in 2014. We shouldn't forget that the social unrest that we've seen in Greece was very specifically provoked by uh, parties, uh, including Syriza, when they were still in the opposition. Uh, it will be very difficult for Syriza now that they lost uh, the election, but th in the process of being transformed in what you would call a social democratic party, to return to their old bad habits. I don't see that happening. Of course, some of our reforms are going to have elements of unpopularity. And you're ready for that, any unpopularity have, that may uh, manifest you know, itself? I have uh, demonstrated that what we need to do um, has to happen. This is my track record. Right. Uh, I will explain my reforms. I will always explain the cost benefit. But one, you know, a lot of the reforms that we have to undertake, um, uh, I think I have the tacit approval uh, of the majority of, of the Greek people. If, for example, we have a, we're very big in terms of reorganizing the state. We want to make the state work for the everyday citizen. Uh, we're very big in terms of digital transformation. Yeah. Um, we're very big in terms of education reform, looking at our schools, the curricula, what we oh. teach our kids. All these are long-term reforms uh, that were never really implemented. But people want instant People want instant uh, help. Don't, I've, don't uh, I've been very clear in terms of laying out what we can do and what can people expect from us. And we will move as quickly as possible. I don't have a magic wand, uh, but I have a committed team, a very clear plan, uh, a very well thought out plan for how yeah. to take this country forward. Be we can deliver quick wins, but it is clear that uh, there is no easy, immediate fix right. to the country's problems. And in investment, you said you want to make Greece more attractive mm -hmm. investment. I mean, you've already sold so much of the family silver, the Port of Piraeus, the Thessaloniki port sold to the Germans last year. You've got 10 more local ports up for sale. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to privatise What is uh, What is you necessary know. and what we can privatise by getting good prices. I'm not... And selling selling Greece? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, that's what I said. I'm not in the logic of selling everything at, uh, at any price. So we will privatise. And it's not only a question of, of getting the money up front, it's a question of making sure that we attract uh, follow-on investment, as we did in the Port of Piraeus. So it's not just how much money you get, it's how many jobs you can create right. afterwards. Looking at your party, um, you, you say that you see yourself as a centrist figure, and I've put it to you that you have a lot of very traditional members of your party, both in terms of members of the actual party and your supporters. So just looking at some of the social um, mm -hmm. affairs issues and so on, do you support um, gender equality, for instance? Mm -hmm. We do. You do. And I, would love to, and I would love to be able to do more on that front in terms of political representation. But why didn't you, in that case, have more cabinet ministers who were women out of 22 cabinet because ministers? Then, only two are women. Out of a total number of ministers, 51, only five are because women. Because un unfortunately, uh, we don't have that many women who were interested in stepping into politics. Are these you days. serious in this whole country is, with all yeah. these and if you, wonderful and, and, and if you Greek look at women? What we did is we put, we put a quota for women. 40% um, uh, of our candidates were women, um, which was a big step forward. But if you look at the composition of parliament, we don't have 40% of women in parliament. But you have the power though, Prime Minister, 21 or so mm -hmm. of the 51 ministers are not members of parliament. They're mm. people of ability, technocrats, you can describe mm. them how you wish. You could have said, I, all right, I'm going to find 21 I asked, experienced women. I'm sure I could go and find them for you here. I asked a lot of women to join the cabinet. They were much more hesitant than men to do so. So I'm not happy about our gender uh, composition. I openly uh, acknowledge it. The women that we have are extremely capable. I'm sure they're going to do a fantastic job. And I'm sure they're going to help other women to join the cabinet when we area have our first Area of improvement there. A definite, right. definite area of improvement. And looking at social affairs, you're mm -hmm. going to put yourself with the EPP, mm -hmm. the European People's Party, the centrist bloc in the European Parliament. It debates in the European Parliament regularly about LGBT rights and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. You've supported civil unions yeah. between mm -hmm. same-sex couples um, when there was a vote in Parliament about three or four years yeah. ago, but only 16 members of your party voted along with you. You're mm -hmm. going to have to do a lot to convince yeah, but we, the Greek people at large that your party is representative of a large block mm -hmm. of Greek but we voters did. who and support LGBT rights. I think it was LGBT an important uh, um, uh, moment for Greece, which is a traditional society, uh, when we passed the uh, civil union. And you know, sometimes uh, 
reforms take some time to mature. And maybe on that front, Greece may be, the Greek society may be a little bit behind the curve. Well, I don't know, because I mean, 32% mm -hmm. of Greek society is under 29, so that's mm -hmm. about a third, and two thirds of them support same sex marriage, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there you are trying to appeal to younger Greeks saying, I want to create jobs for you, don't leave the country, come back. That's one we of your look pledges. At, uh, the civic... And you're marching out of step yeah, um, the, with them. Although the civil union uh, uh, arrangement uh, was put in place, uh, it was not that we had, you know, uh, huge numbers uh, um, of, of people who, who took on the, the challenge. So it is an issue which politically uh, is important, but there are other issues where we feel we have made lots of progress. We've addressed issues of, of, uh, of extreme inequality, uh, of uh, rights of handicapped people who were always left behind in Greece. Uh, we've been very open uh, when it comes to issues such as drug addiction, mm -hmm. uh, advocating very advanced and socially liberal uh, policies. Uh, so uh, on, 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 on various issues, I think we have, I have pushed the party, which is a traditional centre-right yeah. conservative party, to become more liberal, but these changes don't happen overnight. All right, and you've also taken a very mm. strong stand on migrants, mm. and you've mm. visited some of the detention centres, and you've mm. spoken out against the mm. appalling conditions that they have been mm. held in. Um, you took a phone call. The first phone call congratulating mm. you as Prime Minister was from the Turkish President Recep mm. Tayyip Erdogan and obviously the European Union has this deal with Turkey mm. to accept migrants and so on. So what did you discuss with him? Did you discuss the migrant issue? Well, did we you didn't see have a new a, era of Turkish-Greek relations? We didn't have a very long um, discussion but it was a courtesy call. It was actually the first call which I received which I think symbolically is, uh, is important. Look, Greece and Turkey we're destined by geography and history to live together. And I would certainly be looking to establish a new framework of uh, rapprochement between Greece and Turkey, but always based on international, on the respect of international law and the respect of the principles of good neighborly relations. And I communicated that to President uh, Erdogan. Of course, there are challenges, significant challenges, including the Turkish uh, uh, illegal activity mm -hmm. within the Cypriot exclusive economic uh, zone. And I do expect Europe as a whole to react to this because this is a problem affecting the relationship between Europe and Turkey. On the migration side, yeah. uh, uh, this is a deal that has more or less worked yeah. uh, in the interest of Greece uh, and, and Europe. I would be looking at expediting asylum procedures which currently take for ages in Greece. And once a uh, final asylum decision is made, yeah. uh, if, if someone is not granted asylum, he needs to be returned to Turkey according to the agreement. And you, I, I believe you've also had a phone call congratulating you from Boris Johnson, um, the British um, MP. I who is communicated uh, with Boris Johnson, who I happen to, uh, to know. We, we, we spent some time together on, on, on a Greek um, uh, island, so we exchanged text messages. I spoke to Prime Minister May. Mm -hmm. uh, she called me and, and officially uh, congratulated uh, me. So but of course, it is not my, my my point to make any public comments no, on who you, on who will on no, who will replace the prime Greece minister. Is, Greece, obviously, part yeah. of the European Union. I mean, and obviously, Brexit is a mm. big thing. I mean, would you be in favour as a country to renegotiate the Brexit deal? Because both the contenders, Jeremy Hunt, the current foreign secretary, and Boris Johnson, have said they'd like to see that. I don't. See, I don't think there's another done. deal available for uh, for the United Kingdom. I was obviously not part of the previous negotiations, but. Uh, I don't see the uh, European Union uh, offering. Why not? Uh, because I think the deal has been agreed, uh, and it, has, was, it was agreed after uh, a long uh, and cumbersome um, process, uh, and I don't see uh, a reason for changing what has been agreed. All right. Um, mm. Finally, and briefly, you mm. have said that you want to reintroduce a reborn Greece to the world, and in, in 1821, the Greek mm. Revolution, of course, mm. meant you got rid of the Ottoman, um, Ottoman rule. Uh, mm. What can we expect? Uh, a vibrant, uh, optimistic uh, country uh, with a strong diaspora that will support um, uh, the, the country. Uh, a country that is open to take on the challenges of, uh, you know, of a changing world. Uh, and a country that's no longer being considered a poster boy for all the problems of, uh, of Europe. I think Greek society uh, is ready and I'm convinced that we will succeed. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, thank you very much thank indeed you. for coming on Hard Talk. Thank you very much for having me.